Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Zeke. If you want to turn to First Corinthians and uh, to be in chapter one. <clears throat> The title of the message this evening is uh, Driving to Your Destination. You know, now, I don't know how this is at your house, but at my house when I was growing up, oh, as you started shaking her head, I ain't talking about our house, I'm talking about my parents' house. Okay? Of course, you know, although dad drives quite a bit, you know, so from the time that I was probably this big, he was teaching you how to drive. That's what he does. So he, he didn't want you to drive like mom. Okay, that's what he's always preached to us. And he said, now, you got to pay closer attention. you got to look farther ahead as you're coming up on traffic. Watch to see if anybody's turning off. They're hitting their brakes. You know, I've heard this all my life. But don't drive like your mother. Okay? So... <clears throat> I was hoping she'd be gone this evening. They, they were going on a trip, they delayed it. So, anyway. Uh, now, Dad is one of these people that, you know, he had a 66 Corvette with a 427 in it. You know, it would run like a scalded dog. You know, he'd take it to Clay City, he'd drag race it. You know, he, he would have his nephews when they were younger. He'd, He'd have them set up pop bottles, the old 16-ounce glass pop bottles, and he would jump them with the front tires he took off. You know, he'd have them do that out in the middle of the road in front of my mamma and papa's old house. You know what I mean? So he likes to drive with some power, okay? I thank him and my own brother and sisters. Because, now, you can be driving down the road with mom all my life. She'd be over there, and she'd be sitting in the front seat. Sit over her, shut up. I'm a driver. <laughs> you know, I promise you that's how she drove all my life. And Dad told her, he said, Sherry, if you wreck, they're going to find you up in the engine. Because you're going to be flying when you hit whatever you hit. <laughs> now, this, that's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You know, now, for most women, I'll, I'll say that in general, and I don't mean everyone, but, you know, they like these little Volkswagens. You know, they, they, we got them coming over to the store, you'll see them, and they'll be a yellow color, a little Volkswagen, have little eyelashes on the headlights and stuff. You know there's no men driving that car. It has to be a woman. <laughs> And then there's a six, seven guy, he gets out of that car, comes up through there, you know, <laughs> big belt bug on him. No, I'm kidding, I'm making that up. But I mean, you know, there's a woman driving that car. Okay? But wherever you're going, you're going to drive either something with power or something you think looks good. Okay? But tonight, I like what? Well, <laughs> tonight we're talking about driving with a little different motor. Okay, we're, we're going to be talking about driving to your final destination. You know, you're going to be driving with your heart, not with the motor in your car, what's underneath the hood, what's underneath this hood right here. You know, what are you driving with in your heart? So let's look here in 1 Corinthians. In chapter 1, we'll read verses, <clears throat> verses 4 through 8. 1 Corinthians 1, 4 through 8. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which is given to you by Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in everything by Him in all utterance and all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless 
in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for this another opportunity you've given us here today to come out here to open your word and study it and to take something from your word here with us as we leave this place tonight to reach out to someone who's lost and maybe has never heard your word. We just want to take that responsibility on as a Christian to search out those that are lost and are, are sick in this world that need you in their life. And dear Heavenly Father, we just pray that if there is somebody here tonight that does not know you, that does not be that night that they make a decision to serve you. And we just pray that we can keep you in our heart and drive our lives with you. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, we're talking about driving. I'll leave my mom alone for a little bit. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, you just ride with her. I'm like, I ain't right now. <clears throat> so, you know, in the last verse we just read, you know, so that it says so that you may be blameless in the in the blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you know that if we live to see it, Jesus is coming back. If you're dead, you're going to know it because you're going to rise if you're in Christ. That's a promise that He's made to us. So the end is going to come, but how are you going to be when that end arrives? That's the question. Is Jesus driving your heart in your life, in your daily walk? What do you share with other people? Do they see Him in your life, in your actions? in your behavior or, or do they not see him at all that's what you've got to think about you know in Mark 12 verse 30 it says that and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength you know that, that's the greatest commandment that we have is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I, I feel like if we do that, everything else is going to be take care of itself. You don't have to worry about it. If you can get down the first one. <coughs> Although, you know, we the problem is that as we're driving, we've got something eating away at us. You know, and that's the devil. And sin and temptation. And all these things, you know, that's going to make you stumble along the way. Let's turn over to Philippians. Philippians chapter 1. Verses 12 through 14. So this is the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippian church. And he says, But I want to know, I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. You know, I, I know it's used all the time, you know, with, with example of the Apostle Paul, but what better guy to use for an example than him? I mean, you know, it's other than Jesus, you know, the Apostle Paul's right there for for me to use, you know, I don't know who else to use for an example to how to live your life. You know, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked, he was thrown in prison. Uh, Brother Bobby talked this morning, you know, about him writing, uh, you know, Colossians. No, 
No. Oh, Philippians, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Why he's in prison. Yeah, 413. Yeah, I'm sorry. And, uh, but he wrote that while he's in prison. Uh, you know, so I mean, what better person to use for an example of how to live your life and letting God drive your heart on how to live than, than the Apostle Paul? Uh, you know, but what you have to look at, though, to go along with that is over here in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has enabled me, because he counted me, me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer and a persecutor and an, <clears throat> and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Did I say 14 or 15? I'm going to read through 15. I think I said 14. I'm sorry. But, uh, this is a faithful saying that Lord and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners whom I am, in, whom I am chief. I can't talk. Uh, you know, we talk about how great an example that Paul was, you know, but it's because we know of how he stumbled before. You know, that the... First Christian martyr Stephen was stoned and they laid their cloaks at Paul's feet. You know, he was a bad dude. He persecuted the church. He he was just a horrible guy. You know, but then to turn his life around and to serve Christ the way he did, you know, to the end, it is just awesome. I mean, if we could do that with our lives, I mean, I think we would understand and have a total package of what's going on in this book. You know, <coughs> Paul was a bad guy, but he, he just like us, was saved by the grace of God. You know, he's no different. I think that he gives us all something we can relate to. You know, in Philippians, on over, which Bobby read this morning, you know, Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, we've all heard that verse millions of times, and we're probably going to hear it a whole bunch more times. But that is true. If Jesus Christ is driving your heart and your daily walk, you know, you can take on anything that's thrown at you, anything that's coming your way that's going to try to make you stumble, you can overcome with Christ. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians, back to where we started that, actually, but not the same. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18, it says this. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message of the cross is the power of God. What is the power of really, the message of the cross? The message of the cross is nothing more than the saving blood of Jesus Christ. Are you clinging to the cross? Or are you miles away? That's what you have to ask yourself. If you're clinging to the cross, are you hanging on by just a little splinter? Or do you have the hold on it like the nails that were driven into it holding him there? You 
know, that, that little splinter, you know, in the wind, if you're hanging on to that splinter, just a thimble of a piece of that cross, the wind's going to blow you off. It's going to snap. God knows our hearts. And only with God do we have peace. You know, I, I, any preacher, and I don't claim to be a preacher, I'm up here trying this thing out here, but, uh, you know, anybody that preaches God's Word, you know, we're, we're up here, we're sharing our thoughts with everybody that's out here sitting listening, being tortured right now tonight. I know I'm sorry. Uh, you know, we don't know anybody's situation. Nobody's things up here knows what's on your heart, what's on your mind. You know, God only knows that. And if you want peace, that's only found in Jesus Christ. In Philippians, chapter 4, I scared Bobby was all over my sermon this morning in a lot of ways. Uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. He skipped this. He didn't read this this morning. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, in other words, the Apostle Paul is writing here telling them that with Jesus Christ in your life, you can lay down at night, close your eyes, and you can rest. You know, you, you know yourself that there's a difference between going to sleep and actually resting. And you can ask my wife, there's a lot of nights that she'll be talking to me, and I don't even know if she's there. You know, I, I sleep pretty sound. When I close my eyes, it's, it's over. Uh, a lot of people say, I hear them say, you know, well, I'd love to rest like that one night. You know, I mean, I don't know how it is not to sleep that way often. Uh, but, you know, I've heard a lot about it. And I hope I never have to experience that. But with the peace of God in your heart, you can lay down and not worry. You know, I'm going to ask this question. I mean, did anybody hear the thunder last night? I mean, it poured the rain. You heard that. I mean... You know, do, do, do you ever, I was nervous because I had to do this tonight, so I mean, I didn't sleep pretty good last night. I'm not going to lie to you, that's, that's the truth. Uh, but I heard the thunder a lot, you know, and it was loud. I mean, it was loud today earlier, it poured the rain. Charlie said sunshine in his house. He started mowing the grass, but never did rain, it poured at our house. Uh, you know, have you ever thought about when Christ is going to come back? You know, you hear that rumble of thunder during the middle of the night and you, you wake up, you know, because it's shaking the house and you're, I mean, you know, it says it's going to come back on the thief of the night. You know, and with the voice of the archangel, you know, I mean, that rumble of thunder, I mean, you know, it startles you, you wake up, I mean, you think it's in the time. I mean, it's going to happen that quick or quicker. You know, I mean, have you ever thought about that? You're laying there in bed and you hear something like that, you jump up and you're like, is that, is that the Lord come back for us? Is it over? I mean, you, you know, how's your heart? Is Jesus driving your heart? Are you living for Him? Can you sleep peacefully? Not worrying about something like that happening while you're laying there in bed. Did you do something wrong to somebody that day? Hey, I, I'm guilty. I mean, I've seen I'm up here. I'm not preaching at you all. I'm preaching to myself. You know, I'm as guilty as anybody. You know, I mean, we've, we've got to examine ourselves and try to do better. That's what the Word of God says.
You know, my responsibility is to tell you that you can't put off receiving this peace. <clears throat> you know, there's only one way to get that. And that is through the water grave of baptism, through the saving blood of Jesus Christ, that you come in contact with the gift of the Holy Spirit, that you have any assurance of a better place in heaven with God. Let's turn over to Second Peter. Chapter 30. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will burn up. You know, God has made a promise to us. You know, He is going to come back. You know, we know this is true because He came and lived here on this earth. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. Jesus Christ became flesh and made His dwelling among us. He lived on this earth for about 33 years with us. And we killed Him. Did you ever think about that? What killed Jesus? You killed Him. You killed Him. I killed Him. He died for our sins before we were even born or existed or thought of for years. But we killed Him. Those people hung Him there on the cross and He died. But He done that out of love for all of us. They hung Him on the cross where He bled and died for our sins. But He did that to give us hope. To give us, give us hope for His resurrection. Because He told His followers, His closest friends, that He was going to die and He would arise on the third day. And Jesus Christ did arise on that third day and He's sitting at God's right hand today. Interceding for us. Waiting for that time that God's going to send him back to gather us that are in his safety. The message of the cross is the power of God. That power is that shed blood that he gave so freely to save us from our sins. Over in 1 Thessalonians, we're about to draw this to an end here tonight. I know it's a little short. Some of you may be happy, some of you all may be happy. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to end with this passage here we're going to read. But I really want you to think about who's driving tonight. You know, I'm not riding the car with my mom anymore, thank goodness. It's not that bad, I'm kidding. That's not, but, <clears throat> you know, is Jesus driving you to your destination? 
Is He driving our hearts? You know. In Romans, we all know that it says in chapter 3, verse 23, that all have fallen short of the glory of God. You know, but are we five? To grasp onto that cross that is the power of God where Jesus gave us that hope to claim that victory that we sang about tonight the victory in Jesus Christ First Thessalonians chapter 4 Verse 16 and 17. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. You know, I didn't, I didn't read that it said for so long that we will be with the Lord. It says we shall always be with the Lord. We have many promises that God gives us in this book. You know, we have a promise that we know that if Jesus is not driving our hearts to live for Him daily, we're driving straight into hell. Full speed, and we're never going to hit a break. It doesn't matter how good a person we are or how good a person that people think we are. It only matters if God is driving our hearts. And we're living for Him. If we are, we're driving straight into heaven. Only through His grace.